Hello everyone, in this session we will focus on trouble debt restructuring known as TDR. Specifically, we will examine the option of modifying the terms of the loan. In the prior session, we explored TDR through the lenses of debt settlement. Today, we will examine how modifying the terms of the loan works and its implication from an accounting perspective. Now, what is troubled debt restructuring? Well, troubled debt restructuring occurs when a creditor, a banker, a lender grants concession to a debtor or a borrower due to the borrower's financial difficulties. Simply put, these concessions are not made under normal circumstances because the lender, they want to collect the full amount. This situation typically arises during financial difficulties or financial crisis like the real estate crash of 2007 and 2008. The lender has two options. Option one, which is a debt settlement. We already covered this. In this option, the creditor and the debtor agree to settle the debt once and for all. This could involve the debtor transferring asset or providing other consideration to the creditor. And by doing so, we wipe out the outstanding balance. The balance is settled. The deal is closed. That's done. That's what we discussed in the prior session. In this session, which is option two, we would look at modification of loan terms. This is what we need to discuss here. What does that mean? It means we are going to change some of the terms. What tools do we have to do so? To do so? Well, one thing we can do is we can lower the current interest rate. If it was nine, let's make it six. We can extend the maturity rather than giving you two years to pay. We'll extend it over five, lowering your payment. We, we may knock out some of the principal amount, reduce the principal amount that might help you survive. We might forgive some accrued interest. So any, any interest accrued up to this point, we are going to say, we're gonna forgive, forgive you this accrued interest, making it easier for you. Or we could use a combination of all the following tools. This is what we will discuss in this session. Let's go ahead and get started by looking at option two, which is the modification option. Stay motivated and let's get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Hello, my name is Farhat. You are here because you are either an accounting student, a finance student, or someone who's studying for their CMA or CPA exam. Great, you are looking for some additional help and we can help you. I strongly encourage you to visit my website, FarhatLectures.com. I offer additional lectures, resources, including PowerPoint slides, multiple choice questions, in some circumstances, exercises, and true-false questions. Our material is aligned with your CPA review courses, with your CMA review courses, with your college courses. I offer a risk-free trial that you can try to find out whether my website can help you or not. If you find it helpful, you subscribe, you keep your subscription. If not, you cancel and your risk is free. If you like this recording, if you like my lectures, you would like what's on the website. Give me a chance to help you with your college courses as well as professional certification. I hope to see you on the website. So let's go ahead and dive into the second option, which is the modification of terms. Under the modification of terms, we will have the debt in existence. So the debt don't go away. It's a continuation of the debt. Otherwise, if we settle the debt, that's option one we talked about in the prior session. Under the modification of the term, you could have two separate scenarios where the future cash flow, undiscounted, is greater or less than the carrying value of the note. It's either greater or less. And we have to work the two scenarios for the debtor, assuming the future cash flow undiscounted so in other words what am i going to be paying is less than the carrying value of the debt giving the modification or the future cash flow undiscounted the debtor will paying is greater than the carrying value will work both scenarios now what are the modification tools well what can the creditors do to help you pay this debt and the reason they do this modification is because they want to get something they don't want to lose everything so they will try to work with you so what are the tools what can they do to help the debtor what can the creditors do well they could lower your interest rate and as a result they could lower your payment in this way a larger portion of your payment goes toward the principal that's helpful 
they can give you more time to pay. So rather than pay me in the next three years, we can spread the loan over five, seven years. I will extend the maturity date. This way your payment goes down and you can afford to pay me and I can get something as a creditor. I can just reduce the principal balance. I means the creditor. The creditor can tell you, look, you owe me a million. I'm going to reduce the balance to 800,000. So I'm going to forgive 200,000, but we have to, you have to pay me the remainder. I can reduce or forgive any accrued interest. So if there's any accrued interest you have not paid up to this point, I can either reduce the interest amount or just eliminate it altogether. Or I can give you a combination of all of those. I can reduce the interest rate, extend the loan, reduce the principal, forgive some accrued interest, a combination of all of those. But those are the logical tools that the creditors can utilize to do what? To help the debtor keep going pay off the loan, you know, the creditor is going to lose, but at least I'm going to cut down on my losses and I'm going to get something. Now, you need to understand how does the debtor compute their gain and specifically the debtor would have a gain and how would the creditor deals with this? The creditor obviously will have a loss and we'll explain why in a moment. Starting with the, the debtor. The debtor will have a gain. Either will have a gain or no gain. Why? Because the debtor will settle for less what they owe. Because if they can pay exactly what they owe, then we will have no modification. If the debtor can do that, we'll have no modification. But under the modification, the debtor could have a gain and we're going to have to see how that gain is computed. So to compute that gain, we would look at the liability at the loan versus the future undiscounted cash flow. We look at the loan versus the undiscounted. Very important. If you are paying less than the liability, simply put, if your future undiscounted, I cannot emphasize this word enough, you have a gain. So for the purpose of the gain, we look at your future undiscounted cash flow. If it's less than the liability, you have a gain. If it's not less than, if it's not less than the liability, you have no gain. You don't have a loss. You just simply cannot book again and we'll work an example to illustrate this concept so the debtor would all would either have a gain or nothing why because they get a good deal or they get a good deal but it does not amount to a gain the creditor will have a loss we'll always have a loss we don't have to worry about the creditor but the creditor would always have a loss why because the creditor the lender is settling less that's why they're modifying the loan they're modifying the loan the to give the debtor a chance to pay, to help them survive this period, and it's at their expense. Therefore, they would always have a loss. The creditor is giving a concession, but they want to cut their losses. Now, in 2022, FASB eliminated the Trouble Debt Restructuring Recognition and Measurement Guidance. In other words, this topic became the creditors from a TDR perspective became a loan modification. So we will not cover the creditor part. It used to be, we used to have a discounted cash flow model that's no longer required to be used to measure the allowance for credit losses. In other words, for the creditor, that's a separate topic. It's beyond the scope of this recording because we're gonna be dealing with the debtor and it has to do with loan modification. Therefore, the best way to illustrate how the debtor deals with the gain and no gain is to actually look at an example. What should you do now? You want to go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional resources, multiple choice lectures, whether you are an intermediate accounting student or a CPA exam candidate or a CMA exam candidate. Invest in yourself. Invest in your career. Good luck. Study hard. And don't do like Adam. Get into trouble where you have to do that restructuring. <laughs> Good luck.